Now I've had a look at the interface and some of the tools and functions, let's look at how to use the program. We'll start by recording some audio, but first a very brief explanation of digital audio. Audio in the digital world is represented in a similar way to how it works in the physical world, as a waveform. This wave moves up and down over a zero point, and as I zoom in on this wave, you'll see the zero line become more apparent. The zero point represents silence. This is the best point at which to split audio clips. Now we'll take a brief look at audio routing within Music Creator 6. I'm going to start with a completely blank template so that you can see how the routing is built up. Generally, audio tracks are routed to a bus. A bus is similar to a track but capable of having many tracks at once as its input. A project can have up to 8 buses and usually there is one bus that all other buses and tracks eventually route through, known as the master bus. A master bus gives us one area of control for all of the overall output such as level. There is nothing special about the master bus, so if your project doesn't have one, all you need to do is insert a bus in the bus plane and set its output to your main out. This is done in a similar way to how tracks are inserted, and to set the output, just click on the output drop down. This can be set as a default bus by right clicking on the bus header and selecting the option from the menu. To insert an audio track, just select Audio Track from the Insert menu or right click in the track head area to use the context menu. Once a track is inserted, we need to check that its output is set to the master bus. Of course, as I've just set the master bus as a default bus, it will be, but it's worth knowing what to check should you end up with a project that plays back silence. To set up for recording, I need to set the input of the track to the input that the audio source is attached to. In this case, it is a simulated speaker output of a guitar amp, but it could just as easily be a microphone or any other audio source. It's also possible to select a series of inputs or pick from a list using those two options in the input drop down. Once the input's set, we need to set a good level. In the digital world, it's important that levels do not exceed 0 dB. If it does, the audio will be cut off at that point and this will be known as clipping. This will result in clicks or pops at best and should be avoided. This is where the track meters come in helpful. For the record meter to be active on a track, it needs to be armed for recording. Just click on the recording widget and the meter will become active even though we are not actually recording yet. They can be configured by using the options menu. In this case, we are interested in the record meter options, but the playback and bus meters have very similar settings available. A couple of useful settings for the record meters are the hold peaks and lock peak settings. Hold peaks will show a lit segment for the latest peak that takes a little while to decay. Lock peaks will keep the peak segment permanently lit until a higher one happens or the meter is reset. To reset a meter, just click on it. A good level to aim for is around the mid to top end of the green area with the odd peak lighting the amber area that starts at around minus 6 dB. The input level is controlled by your interface. Sometimes a physical control in the interface, or it might be part of the software that came with it. Input levels are not controllable from inside of Music Creator. It's also important to set the level based on the loudest part a track is likely to get. For example, if setting levels on a vocal track, Set them at a loud point, such as a chorus, rather than a quiet section. At this point, it's possible to start recording, but there are other considerations to make, and one of them is what to do with the recorded material. We looked at recording options briefly earlier, and they can be accessed by right-clicking on the record button. Here is where we can set the recording mode. The first mode choice is sound on sound which means any existing material in the track will stay in place and the recorded material put into a new take lane. We'll look at take lanes shortly. The other option is overwrite, meaning any existing material will be overwritten or deleted by the new material. Back in the track view, we can now take a brief look at take lanes. They are automatically created as needed when recording, but it's possible to create them manually and record into a specific existing take lane. 
To access take lanes, either click on the take lane icon toward the bottom left of the track header, or press Shift plus T with the track in focus. They look very similar to the track itself, but with fewer controls. They can be added by clicking on the plus icon, and the take line is automatically assigned a name, but they can be renamed in the same way as a track. They're deleted by clicking on the cross icon. Be aware though that this deletes the lane and any data in it. It is not a hide button. To record into a specific take lane, arm it in the same way that a track is armed by clicking on the record arm button. We'll be taking a closer look at take lanes when we get to editing. If you want to use and hear any effects while recording, turn on the input monitoring button. Be aware though that the input monitoring might put more strain on your system than direct monitoring. Direct monitoring is listening to the audio before it gets as far as the computer and is usually an option on your interface or perhaps control from your interface's software. It reduces latency as there is no processing performed on the monitored signal. If direct monitoring isn't an option, you'll have no choice other than to input monitor. Another consideration for the recording stage are the tempo, meter, key and metronome settings. Tempo sets the measure boundaries for the tempo grid and is the speed at which MIDI data within a project will play back. It is set or adjusted in the transport module. Click on the display and set it as required. This is the global tempo for the project. To insert a tempo change at a point within the project, use that option from the project menu. Meter and key settings are changed in a similar way. Just click on the meter display. Note that by default, this inserts a meter or key change at the current now time. Change this if this isn't what you want. The meter will affect, amongst other things, how the tempo grid is drawn and the key setting mainly affects the staff view. The metronome supplies a click track to help keep time while you're recording and it can be turned on or off for recording or playback using the buttons. The preference page can be accessed by right clicking on these. Of course, most of this setup need only be done once and then saved as part of a template if your requirements are different to the current default settings. Click on File, Save As, Template from the menu. The only setting that tends to change on a per track or per project basis are the recording levels. Once we are set up, all we need to do is click on the record button, at which point recording will start. Click on the stop button to stop recording and a new clip is formed for each recorded track. If you want to have several attempts at recording a session, there's no need to stop, rewind and start recording for each take. It's easier to set up loop recording. To do this, mark out the required time region by click dragging in the timeline. Right click over the timeline and then select set loop points. This creates points between which the transport will continually loop, indicated by the yellow line. Once the now time reaches the end loop point, it returns to the start. To turn off looping, use the right click timeline menu or press L. Recording with a loop point will create a fresh clip for each pass, either in a new take lane or a fresh track, depending on your recording preference settings. Similarly, if there's one small area of recording that needs replacing, perhaps a wrong note in a guitar solo, for example, we can use punch recording. To set this up, again click drag the required area in the timeline, right click and select set punch points. Now when we start to record, this punch region is the only region that will be recorded. That means the now time can be moved back as far as needed to get a feel for the track while playing along, but recording won't actually start until the punch in point is reached. Recording stops automatically at the punch out point. Punch can be turned on or off from the timeline right click menu. It's possible to use loop and punch together so you can set up a larger region to loop over with a smaller one inside of that for punch recording. 